Let's take a look at how much you should have saved for retirement by ages 55, 60, and 65. As we get into this study and the data supporting the numbers, I'm gonna predict that you might be thinking one of two ways. Either you're thinking, I don't think I have enough right now, or you're thinking, I think I've got enough, but I'm just curious to see how I compare to, to what the average is or to compare what to, to what other people are doing. Because really it's in, it's in our nature to want to compare and to see what others are doing. However you're feeling right now, this video is here to give you hope. My goal is that wherever you are right now, however you might be feeling, you can leave this video just a little bit better than when you clicked play. There's this famous quote that's got a, a lot of wisdom behind it, and now it's actually backed by science. But the quote is, without vision, people perish. So without a vision or without a hope for the future, people perish. Hope is really what sustains us all along the way, but it's also what gets us started in the first place. So you're already on your way. You've already been thinking about and starting to plan for your retirement and your future because you're watching this video right now. And as we're planning, we're really doing, uh, we're, what we're doing is planning for the future, this future outcome that we hope to achieve. We help a lot of people plan for the future at our retirement planning firm, Streamline Financial. And by the way, I'm Dave Zoller and I'm one of the owners of that firm. And since we're limited to helping just a select few high net worth clients, we created this channel to really share some of the best practices and, and best principles that anyone can apply to their retirement or to their financial life. Now that idea of spending time planning actually reminds me about something that I've been reading about recently, and it's this law of nature that we can apply to our retirement plans and retirement planning as well. This law is related to how plants grow. Now, stay with me here for a minute. A flower that we see, it's this, it's really this beautiful thing and it's above the ground and we get to see really the fruit of the growth from this flower. But what had to happen for this flower to bloom, really a lot of work had to go on below the ground before anything could happen. Before it ever sprouted, there was all this root system being created. So what I was learning about was this thing called phototropic growth. Now this is all the stuff that happens above the surface, but there's also this thing that happens first, which is gravitropic growth, which is uh, what we don't hear about a lot. It's really underground. It can be difficult. It can be dirty and, and uh, nobody really sees what's happening. But if plants do this, they're grounding and they're strengthening themselves to then eventually get to that ideal end result. They don't know they're doing this, it's just a law of, of plants and nature and that's what happens. So as what we're doing right now, it might feel kind of like the gravitropic uh, growth where we're learning, researching, hearing some of the confusing financial terms and maybe not even understanding the full complexity of the financial world, but it's needed to get to that end result that we want. So kudos to you for making it this far. One last thing to keep in mind before we see the data. This study, it comes from T. Rowe Price and they're making assumptions using some rules of thumb. And as Sean from our office often says, rules of thumb are great in the absence of a plan. So remember, your plan is different than anyone else. This, this video here, it's just to give you an idea. The study and the data that we're gonna look at is really just to get you, give you an idea. So if you watch this and then you don't continue planning for your specific situation, then it's not gonna be helpful. Nothing's gonna come of it. So this is just to get you started. And then after the data, I'll show you a sneak peek of our favorite retirement planning software that you should be able to get access uh, for free. And if you do end up liking this video, please give it a like so that more people can get helped too. Now, let's look at the data. Let's look at first a 55 year old. Here are the assumptions that T. Rowe Price is making, if you can see this. Now I'll include this below as well, but there's some investment return rates. And then this is a person that retires at age 65. So the 55 year old is gonna be working another 10 years until they retire at 65. And the savings benchmark ranges, these are gonna be based on individuals or couples with incomes from 75 to 250,000. So I'll show you each one of those and how, so you can kind of match up what, what you might be uh, compared to here. So here are some of the assumptions that T. Rowe Price is making. This is a married couple, dual income. It's not gonna factor in social securities and it's not factoring in house values or other assets or even debt, things like that. What this is doing is showing how much you should have saved based on a multiple of income by these certain ages. So for a 55 year old, let's say we start with this person who has uh, income of 75K per year. So according to T. Rowe Price, the multiple that they should have saved is 
five times or 375,000. Now, if someone's making an income of 100,000, then it should be six times. And then you can see the rest here. If you're making 250,000 a year, dual income, by age 55, their recommendation is seven times income. You might ask, well, why is it that uh, the multiple is higher for the person who's making more? Well, the, here's why. Usually the cost of living is likely higher for people with higher incomes. And then also, as you think about it, social security, as they get into retirement ages, that makes up a larger portion of income for people that have a lower income. So, so social security makes a bigger piece of the income pie. So now let's move on to the age 60 people and what the multiple is. We can see that it's getting larger and larger. And you'll notice that the multiple is going up for older folks as well. And the reason why that is, is because according to this assumption for T. Rowe Price, at age 55, you've got 10 years left of savings before 65 when you start actually taking income over here. So as you get older, the multiple is just naturally growing or needs to be larger as you get close to age 65. And then for age 65, we can see the multiples here, 8.5% to 11.5%, depending on what the income is. Now, after seeing this so far, you're feeling uh, either good or you're feeling bad, or maybe it's indifferent, but however you're feeling right now, don't let it go to waste. You can either use the positive expectation that, you know, if things looked, uh, if you felt like you're doing better than the average, you can use that positive look to the future to start planning out that dream retirement even more and get more detailed with your specific situation. Or if you've got the negative emotion right now, you can use that to get serious about your own situ situation and then also get more clarity using that DIY retirement planning software that we like a lot. It's really, the, the in my opinion, one of the best consumer facing uh, planning softwares out there that makes it easy enough to use by yourself just to get a better picture. And you can find that link to that planning software below this video. So take whatever energy you're feeling right now and keep moving forward with your retirement planning. I hope that was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe, and then I'll see you in the next video next week. Take care.